Hi, and thanks again for tuning in to the Texas Flycaster video channel. This channel goes with www.texasflycaster.com. That's a website I created back in 2007. Loaded with information and photographs about travels and technicalities on fly fishing in Texas. Thanks for tuning in. Please leave a comment or subscribe. Hi guys and welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing Report for Friday, September 29, 2017. As you saw from the photos earlier, I was out on the water last week on Lake Ray Roberts. I had a couple of friends with skips come into town and one of them's fairly local and the other one's from Louisiana and these guys kind of make an annual pilgrimage to fly fish for carp here on Lake Ray Roberts in North Texas. You probably don't recognize the guy on the bow on that one photograph. Uh, that's Conway Bowman. So at least I can say I met Conway. He's a cool cat. They, those guys all have great stories to tell from uh, peacocks in South America to sailfish in Guatemala and they're still getting it done and doing it on a regular basis which is the kind of people I like to hang with when it comes to fly fishing. Anyway, what you're going to find today at the very end of this is the introduction of a new character in this comedy tragedy of a video channel and uh, I'll bring him out so for the first time ever in one of these uh, regular reports we'll do a cut go get the uh, the new guest and make an introduction but for now let me tell you what's going on here in north texas rain we got a little bit of rain the last couple of days this whole week has been blown because of rain and it doesn't really bother me that much because we are winding down the carp guiding and the carp fly fishing here in north texas fish are coming off the flats they're fewer in numbers they're pretty sensitive, although I caught one with the guys last week and showed them where the fish were on Ray Roberts. Um, they had a hard time of it. So that, that happens this time of year, it slows down. And I really enjoy saying that because what happens is a bunch of you guys find it in yourselves and find a little fortitude to go out and prove me wrong, which is just the most, the greatest thing that you can do is, is prove me wrong. Now, anybody in anything, I'd love to be proven wrong. So feel free, go get them. What's going to happen in the future of the Texas Fly Fishing Report is we're going to we're going to wind it a little bit, wind it down a little bit, and re-emphasize or begin to emphasize for the first time Southern Oklahoma and fly fishing there because there's two reaches we have. One is where I'm going next week, which is the Texas Gulf Coast, and that's a long reach. That's 400 miles. Uh, it's a lot closer to go to. What I call Benbow, which is uh, Beaver's Bend in Broken Bow, Colorado, Oklahoma. And then there's uh, Blue River in Oklahoma, which if you look back, I had some great action last year on Blue River in Oklahoma. We're going to do that again. And the icing on the cake is we'll actually be filing reports, Texas fly fishing reports, on location in Oklahoma. It's a pretty, uh, pretty daunting task, but we're going to go ahead and try to capture some new video of the the environment there i haven't been there you know i got sick in 2015 those floods i think happened in 14 at the beginning of 15 something like that and so that whole place has been rearranged and uh the furniture has been moved around in the room that is the lower mountain fort and we're going to find out if we can still find our way around which i would imagine it's going to take me at least a month to uh, figure that one out the reason you come here I know is because you want to know what's going on with Texas fly fishing. And from what I'm seeing, things are really starting to normalize now. We've, we had a whole lot of fresh water, a trillion gallons of water fell on the Houston watershed. And so that water has made its way out into the bays. The salinity's off, the, the whole thing is off still, but improving greatly day by day with the tides. Of course, tides move that fresh water out, move salt water back in. Uh, all in all, it, it could well have been a very healthy thing to happen, to flush that area, which needs flushing on a fairly regular basis. And it, of course, it really had an effect on the bayous in Houston and the, the numbers of fish there when you're talking biblical, um, times two biblical uh, flooding. So that, that's a problem. 
as I accumulate these reports, of course you'll have the scroll at the end as well of the uh, TPWD reports that I always do at the end. It can show all the lakes and then the salt, salt water coastal areas. Um, let me just sum it up for you and what I believe to be true and what I see to be true. If you have any capability of, of getting out and getting on the water between the land cut at Port Mansfield that goes all the way across to the land cut that cuts through South Padre Island dividing it in North Padre Island and south all the way down South Padre Island and South Bay that's where you want to be and I mean this is the time of year too so all all lights are green down there this place was not affected by these this hurricane and the fresh water and it is stable and performing there's a lot of redfish to be seen, a lot of speckled trout. Speckled trout, of course, are a little off on the grass and then deeper. And, and I hear them, are they here, there, even in the potholes. So that's, that's what's going on there. I always focus more on that, uh, on these reports, on the saltwater report, because fly fishing is salt. <clears throat> is a lot more doable than fly fishing in freshwater lakes. I mean, you can do the rivers and do the river thing and the Colorado and all that. Those are subject to runoff. There's rain in the middle of Texas right now, so those might be blown out. I imagine they are blown out, actually. But that's just one of those things that I can easily translate uh, conventional fishing into fly fishing in salt. It's a lot more difficult, still doable, but still more difficult to translate freshwater fly fishing in lakes to other lakes. In other words, I've been to five lakes, different lakes in six weeks, eight weeks here in North Texas, and none of them have the habitat that Ray Roberts has for carp. So, I mean, in all those lakes, I didn't see as many carp as I see in an hour on Lake Ray Roberts. That's just the way it is. So that's what makes it kind of difficult to translate uh, freshwater where it's very easy to translate saltwater into fly. But, that said, October, of course, is the month where, where there's transition in salt, where, where redfish will school up towards the end of October at the jetties at South Padre Island. I've seen them by the thousands and thousands there um, as they school up and start to head out. What we have to watch for and, and basically hope for is typical winter patterns this year. We we'll probably need that this year more. Last year we didn't have that. And so <clears throat> you kind of need it just because it enhances the, the typical patterns and it also enhances, you know, spawns and things like that and behavior patterns to, to normalize. Uh, if you go through more than a couple of years, I would say of, of atypical conditions where we never have winters for two or three years, um, it's going to lead to some strange things probably on the coast of Texas, I would think. So keep your eyes open for that. In other words, I probably will end up, I know I'm going to the coast next week, but I'll probably end up going to the coast again in late October, early November, uh, all the way down so that I can see what this redfish thing is doing at the, at the last gasp when, before fish move out to deep water. And they may not move out, they may not do anything because it may not get cold enough soon enough we're also, you know, November is the big time for uh, catching flounder in Galveston, in the Galveston system, and specifically at Seawolf Park. So that's a place I've been going for years, and I try to get there every year. I didn't get there when I was sick. They didn't have a winter last year, so that didn't happen as big. So we'll see what happens this year. I'm going to go there this year. Uh, we'll just have to see if, uh, if everything else lines up. So with no further ado, let me cut this right here. I'm going to go get my new friend to show you. Uh, he's Bree Gabrielle wasn't available. You know, she got married, so I just did the second best thing that you can possibly do in a fly fishing video. Let me go bring him out. So there's two things guaranteed to uh, attract a lot more, a lot more viewers. One of them is, of course, women with cleavage, but I don't do that. Another one is dogs. This is Finn. F-I-N-N -N, Finn. And there's the camera over there. Say hi, Finn. Anyway, this is Finn. He's a young border collie and we found him recently uh, near here. And we're going to see. I took him swimming earlier this week and he swam for a treat. 
and we'll see what else we can get him to do. He's obviously uh, got a mind of his own right now. But that's Finn. I hope you guys like him and as much as I do. And we'll just see how all this turns out. He's obviously a squirmer right now. Let's see how he likes it up here. Hey, thanks for watching. Go to www.texasflycaster.com for more information. And uh, we will uh, see you at soon. I'll probably be off next week because of going to the coast. But uh, we are uh, definitely working to bring you guys as much great, fresh information as we can. That, store, that thing on the coast is for uh, Drake Magazine, so hopefully that will turn into a story that they can use. They've asked me to go there and do this. And hey, get out of there. Get out of there. And so, and so, um, don't fall off the back now. Come here, buddy. Come here. Don't you fall off, son. So anyway... We got our work cut out for us, don't we? Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Let me know if you find the fish anywhere. And as always, go to TexasFlyCaster.com for the latest, greatest information about fly fishing in Texas and to see our buddy Finn in action soon in my Yeti right now. Thanks to my sponsors, by the way. I appreciate you guys.